Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, part three of the $400 Ryzen 3 2200G computer build video series, Build Guide Time. In this video, the camera's gonna be overhead. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step putting together this amazing value in a desktop computer. Linked down in the video description below will be a number of things. First of all, the full playlist for this video series. Part one was the parts overview. If you just wanna see a list of the parts and a brief discussion of them and how I get to the $400 figure, check out that video. Part two, is a detailed guide. It is 35 minutes long and I do all the comparisons, Ryzen 3 versus Ryzen 5, motherboards, RAM, storage, and I go into more of a deep dive as to what parts you might choose, alternatives, and what the pros and cons are. This is the build guide and coming up soon, BIOS update, Windows install, overclocking, and some more videos on this computer. Also linked down in the video description below will be links to Amazon and Newegg for all of these parts. If you are interested in putting together this machine, compare prices between Amazon and Newegg, buy it where it makes the most sense to you. But if you want to support tech deals, please use those links. They are affiliate links and they do support the channel. I would be very appreciative. Now, I have done a number of performance videos on the Ryzen 3 2200G. In fact, I've done 17 different games. Also linked down there will be individual videos in a playlist for all 17 games tested with live gameplay. Not just benchmark charts, not just a built-in benchmark, but actually playing the game with benchmark charts at the end of each of them. Now, a later video in this series will put all 17 benchmark charts into one, and I'll talk about that briefly but I really encourage you to go watch the live gameplay because benchmark charts can be deceptive. The live gameplay will show you just how well this CPU will actually play games without a dedicated graphics card. If you don't wanna look at those, here's the short, short version. Every game was playable at some detail and some resolution setting. Sometimes it was not 1080p, sometimes it was low detail, but they were playable. Many games were in fact playable at 1080p at either normal or high detail. It's really an amazing value for the money. Now, having said that, there are a couple of minor changes I made to this build guide I just wanna note here based upon part two of this video. First of all, I did not actually put this AdLink SSD in here because it's a 256 gig drive and I wanted more space. So I upgraded that to a 480 gig drive. And I went ahead and installed the Ryzen 5 2400G in this because I wanna do some more testing with it. I tested fewer games with that. That playlist will be linked down below as well to those performance videos. And frankly, at the end of the day, since I have both of them, I'm gonna put the Ryzen 5 in because I'm actually gonna keep this computer. It really is a good deal. Beyond that, it is basically as you saw in the first two videos, and those kind of changes are what that part two guide is for, is because you can build it your way. Custom PCs are custom. A number of people said, well, I'm not gonna do an SSD, I'd rather have a hard drive, or I'd rather have this, or a different motherboard, or a different case. Watch part two of the video series. And with that introduction out of the way, let's put the camera overhead and build this computer. Here you can see all the parts laid out on the desk. We have our motherboard here in the box. I've got the case with the glass panel already removed, our power supply, RAM, SSD, and CPU, and a minor thing, one more SSD just for my own purposes. That's not in the $400 budget build, but it's there because I want an extra one. The first thing we're going to do is move the case aside because we're going to prepare the motherboard and put the CPU on it. Here you can see the motherboard laid out on the table. In order to install the cooler that comes with it, we need to remove these four screws that hold down these brackets. These are the old style AM3 brackets used with older coolers. We're not going to be using them. With those out of the way, you'll see the four screw type mount posts that we'll actually install our cooler on, but not yet because we need a CPU. To install the CPU, simply lift the lever up. It's a zero in four insertion force socket. There is a square in one corner. Line up the CPU with that because it only goes in one way and you simply drop it in. You don't push it in, it simply drops in. And with our CPU in place, we simply lower the lever and it locks down into place. This is the AMD Stealth Cooler that comes with the Ryzen APUs. Now, normally it comes with paste pre-applied, but I've already used this when I did my testing, and so I need to put thermal paste on. The application on here is one-time use only, so buy, buy some more paste if you need to reapply. If you do have to apply thermal paste, it doesn't take a lot, just maybe one or two rice grains worth right in the center will be enough. And then simply line up the screw holes, setting the cooler down in place, Screw it in using a cross pattern while holding it down. Do not screw any side in all the way until each side is partially screwed down. Once that is done, 
Make sure you attach the cooler to the four pin header on the motherboard. The RAM is fairly straightforward. We have two memory slots. We're going to use both. So move the notches on both sides out. The memory modules have a notch that is not in the center and it lines up with the notch on the board. The RAM goes straight in. It does not go in at an angle. And you simply push down both sides and they click straight in. Same thing with the other module. Lines up. Our RAM is installed, our CPU is installed, and our cooler is installed. Now we're going to move this out of the way and put the case back to put the IO shield in. With the case back in place, there's a couple of preparations we have to make before we can put the motherboard in. First, we need to install the IO shield into the back. The IO shield installs from inside the case and simply pops into place. The next thing we need to do is install standoff posts. Now one is already installed here, but there's different locations depending upon whether you have a micro ATX or a mini ITX board. These posts do come with the case and you'll simply need to screw them in where you see the M in order to mount the motherboard. With the six mounting posts in place, now it's time to install the motherboard. The IO parts go through the IO shield first and then it simply sets down. With all six screws firmly screwed into place, we're going to plug in our rear case exhaust fan into the spot on the motherboard right here. No graphics card is going here because again, Ryzen APU integrated graphics. Because this is a micro ATX case and there's limited room, I'm actually going to install the power supply last. I'm going to take the back panel off and I'm going to mount the two two and a half inch SSDs and connect the front panel connectors along the bottom of the motherboard using the diagram in the motherboard manual. You can see here that I've routed the cables down here instead of through this hole where they came from and I've plugged them into the bottom of the motherboard. It will make it tight for the power supply but they'll fold over here and the power supply is a standard length so it won't be too bad. I am now going to install the two and a half inch SSD. Now, if you were going to install an M2 drive, which in many regards is easier, you would simply put it right here. Instead, I'm going to use the mounting bracket that's on top of this to simply install it just like so. I have now wired a serial ATA data cable through the back here, up here, and into the drive itself, and then we'll plug the power in in a second. The power supply slides inside and then screws into the back just like so. With the power supply screwed in, now all we have to do is connect the major cables. Most of these we're not using. The two PCI Express power cables, the Molex connectors, etc. We're not using any of it. In fact, we only need three cables. One for the SATA drive, one for the 24-pin ATX motherboard, and one for the CPU power connector up here. Pro tip, if you buy this case, the 24-pin ATX cable will not run behind the uh, shield. I tried running it through here. I just spent several minutes putting it in and then taking it out. It will fit behind the drive cage over here and run up, but there simply is not enough room between the back panel and this um, back plate to actually put the 24-pin ATX cable, so it has to run through here. This gives you a quick look of the back of the computer. As I said, there's not enough room here to run the 24-pin ATX cable, so it's just kind of shoved here behind the drive tray, which if you had filled with drives would be a bit of a challenge. Here is this serial ATA cable I mentioned before, and then these are the front panel connectors. That's where they came from the factory. Otherwise, it's pretty bare and straightforward. Here you can see the front of the machine. You can see the 24-pin ATX cable run from below. You can see the CPU power connector. It is not long enough to really have routed behind it, even though it probably would have fit. I zip-tied it here just to hold it out of the way, and then it runs up here and plugs into the motherboard. I had actually taken the RAM out in order to get this on and off when I mentioned I rerouted that. And we'll just put the RAM back in. And that's all there is to it. All we have to do left now is install the glass panel here and put the back panel on, plug it in, and turn it on. And so there you have it, the complete build guide to this computer. It is one of the easiest builds I've ever done on this channel without a dedicated graphics card in a very easy to build in case, simple motherboard. It goes together very quickly. Couple of notes that you'll see in a future video. Yes, I did have to update the BIOS on this board, but that's because I've had this board since the middle of last year. It actually came with the launch BIOS. I'll show that in the next video, Windows setup and installation. But yes, I did, which means I actually had to put a Ryzen 3 1200 in here download the BIOS, put it on a USB thumb drive, update the motherboard, take that CPU off, put the Ryzen 5 2400G on, 
and then it would actually boot. You might be asking the question, how are you supposed to make this work if you don't have a spare Ryzen 3 1200 lying around? Well, if you actually go out and buy a new motherboard today, odds are the BIOS will be new enough in order to you not have to do that. Motherboards manufactured from somewhere in November to December of 2017 already had BIOSes updated enough to take these APUs. My motherboard was before that, which is why it had an older BIOS and didn't work. If you get a motherboard that is not up to date enough to use the CPU and you don't have one, there's a couple of solutions. First of all, some vendors will simply flash the updated BIOS for you. A local computer shop might do it for you. And AMD has services through their warranty service that if you fill out a form online, that they will actually send you a very low end, I believe it's a dual core APU from the previous gen, but it works on this motherboard. It's enough just to get it booted in order for you to update the BIOS. And since it's an APU, you don't need a dedicated graphics card and then you get your BIOS updated and then you put your Ryzen APU in. Now there is of course a delay in that because they have to ship it to you. But as far as I know, AMD does not charge for that service. So it's an option. The other option you might have is wait until the end of April. Somewhere around the third week of April, I'm expecting the 400 series of motherboards to launch, the B450 and the X470, which you really wouldn't use with an APU. Those motherboards are guaranteed to come out of the box with support for this. So if you're watching this video at the end of March or beginning of April and you buy a B350, if it's new current stock sold from Amazon or Newegg, it probably will already be updated enough. If not, buy a B450 motherboard at the end of April, or if you're watching this video later, then just buy a B450, and then the BIOS is simply not a concern. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below, questions and comments in the comment section, and check the links in the video description, a link to the full build video series for this computer, a link to the full playlist of the Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 APU game performance videos will be down there, check those out, and all the parts to Amazon and Newegg. As I mentioned earlier in the video, those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. It is really helpful if you use those if this video was helpful to you in your buying decisions. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.